Hi everyone, it is time for the Make a Dicky Make Along. And today I'm going to film a little film for you and get you started, show you what your supplies are, and get you started. Okay? So I'm going to point the camera down and we're just going to get after it. You can do this, you guys. You can do this. Okay, let's start. Okay, everyone, here is a list of supplies in general that we're going to be using. You want a worsted weight, number four weight yarn. Here I have Bravo worsted, and it is 100% premium acrylic. The color is called Marina. This is a 100 gram, 218 yards. Don't know that this gives your weight, but you want roughly 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of yarn. Two, at least 200 yards, and that will make this sticky. Now, we also are gonna use a straight needle in a size 10. This is not the shorter one, These are a 14 inch. So I would suggest the 14 as opposed to the 10, just because you don't want your stitches to be too, too close together. This is a six millimeter, number 10. And the color is a little bit different, but these are older vintage ones, and I wanted to show you how you could definitely use those. You want a pair of scissors want a darning needle, you want some stitch markers, you also want some stitch holders. These are stitch holders. I have them in various sizes. You're going to want a couple of these. And you will slide your stitches onto these to hold them until you need to use those stitches again and I, I do recommend a couple of these or something similar where you can put this on if you're in the middle of something it's a stopper I didn't put that in my instructions on Facebook but I would recommend that to hold your hold your yarns and your stitches onto your needles so you don't fumble now you can use a circular knitting needle. I would recommend a 24 inch to be suitable for the length of the dickey. This is what your dickey is going to look like. You're going to have a slight um, collar on it, a small shoulder on either side, and then, and then a flap on the front and a flap on the back. In the past I have made these where I made the flap just a little bit shorter in the front than I did it in the back and I got to where I was only making them the same because they I like them better where they sit farther down on your chest okay so we're going to do a ribbing down here and this here is not done as well as it should have been I should have done a better I'm going to show you how to do this on the sides so this doesn't curl up as much. You are going to pull out from your ball of yarn approximately 40 inches. There's 20. And I mentioned to have a tape measure around also if I did not mention. So there is 40 and I leave a little bit more for the tail and then you're going to make a slip knot. Now there's more than one way to cast on. I'm going to show you a couple of them. The first one would be a long tail cast on. Now I do have a video to show you how to do this, but basically you put your knot, your slip knot on, you're going to put your pointer finger between the two, you're going to grab them, 
then you're going to put your thumb in between. This reminds me a lot of Jacob's Ladder. You can split them apart. I hold my stitch on the needle. I'm going to come, I'm going to, I'm going to tip it backward. I'm going to come over to this side of the thumb and pick up. Bring it over to this side on the finger and pick up. I'm going to swing it around in between right there. And there's my new stitch. And do this loosely. You do not want to cinch it down too hard. You want it loosely. If you do this and it's feeling like it's really tight on here for you, I would suggest going up a needle size when you do this. So just one needle, you would go up to like a, a, a 10 and a half or 11, and you would cast them on. And then when you go to do it, you would use your other needles to do it. So let me show you that again. Bring it back, go to this side, then to this side, and bring it in under there. You're bringing it in under these right here of the thumb. You're going to bring it in between these two that are on the thumb, right in between them. So come over on this side, pick it up, bring it over to this side of that, to the left side of that strand, and see here's the two, and you're bringing it up through the middle of them. Let go with the thumb, and then take up this excess. Now let me show you another way. Again, you would have your slip knot. We're going to do this as a knit on. You're going to take your needle, put it in from left to right, and in through to the back. Here is my tail yarn. If you are doing this, you do not need this long tail. You only need a short tail if you're going to do the knit on. You only need the long tail for the other way, which is the long tail cast on. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to leave it there and show you. This is the yarn coming from my ball. Wrap it around. Bring that stitch up. Bring it around. And then I'm going to come in as if to, and then pick it up from the right side and pick it up and put it onto my left needle. Give it a little bit of a tug so it's not as loose. We do it again, left to right, yarn around. There's my new stitch. Come up, bring this left needle back on the right side and pick it up and put it on the needle. And that is how you knit on your stitches. If you are doing the long tail cast on, you have your long tail here, and you're casting your stitches on, you're going to cast on 56 stitches. So let's get those on and I'll be right back. I will tell you another time when it comes in very handy to know how to knit on some stitches. And that is because I am here, I'm at 45 stitches and I am not going to have enough tail. I did not pull out enough. So I'm going to have to knit on the others. So I'm at 45 and I'm going to knit them on up to 56. So that's 46. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. I now have my 56 stitches and you really cannot see a terribly lot of difference between those two casts on. But it is different when you look at it along the bottom line here. It is a little different, but not so terribly much that you're going to notice it once you get it going. Now here is what we're going to do. We're going to knit the next five rows and that's going to give us what we call a garter stitch. When you knit over and you knit back you create a garter ridge. So you're going to knit five rows. Okay. Don't mark anything just yet. Just knit five rows. 
So here's our knit stitch. We go into the left, needle goes through to the back, we come up and around, there's our new stitch, and we slide that off of that needle, and now this stitch is on the new needle, onto the right, from the left to the right. So left side to the back, around, there's your new stitch, and pull it off. Now you have it on the new needle. And there is a saying for doing this, and I will tell you what it is. So the ghoulish way to say it is you stab it, you strangle it, and then you throw it off a cliff. Stab it, strangle it, throw it off a cliff. There you go, guys. Okay, we're going to knit all the way across. And we're going to do this for five rows. And I will see you at the end of your five rows. And what I would do is I would just tick them off. I would just make you a little place and go one, two, three, four, five. And, and that'll, be, that'll be how you do that. See you back after five. Okay, we are at our five rows. You can now see what I mean when I call these garter rows. You have garter bump rows here. You see a couple of them. That's our, actually our starting row on the front, and that's our starting row on the back. It does look a little bit different. It almost looks like two, but it's not. Okay. Now we need to mark this because this is, no, no, we're not marking this. This is our wrong side. We're not going to mark our wrong side. When we turn back around here in a minute, we are going to mark it as the right side. I mean, you could. Now remember, just so you know, and you don't get confused as to where you're at, your yarn is coming from the right side, which means that's where you want this needle to be facing. And then you're going to put your needle in this other needle in from the right. Everything is coming from the right. It is for me because I am a thrower. Now, if you are continental knitting, your yarn may be up here at the top or on the left, and you may have your yarn in that left hand, but the yarn is still over on this right side. It finishes over here as you're starting. So, just to clarify that. Now, let's go ahead and flip it over, which would mean the back end of your needle is facing the right. And let's put a different color yarn in here or a marker. I will use something that I can see, which is why I pulled these yellow ones out to go with this color of yarn. These are called light bulb markers. And I'm going to mark, just stick this on the front. You could put a piece of yarn around here and tie a little bow and have it facing out on this side. This is our right side, okay? Now let's flip it back over. And here's what you're going to do now. Now you are going to, we're going to make these sides to where they won't curl up on us. So this is going to be considered our row one, which is our wrong side. You're going to knit three, then you're going to purl, and then you're going to knit three. And we're going to place these markers in here. So this is going to keep your sides from rolling. You know, over time it may. It's worsted weight yarn. Sometimes it might, but one, two, three. Now I'm going to place the marker. Okay, and now I'm going to put the yarn in the back. I'm going to bring my right needle from the right side through to the left side, but across the top here. Instead of going in the back like we do with the knit, it's going to come in the front over the top of this needle. This right needle is sitting on top of the left in that loop. Now our yarn, which has been brought forward, 
gonna have to bring it back and around that yarn. Now we're gonna push that yarn down to get our stitch and slide that off. So in from the right to the left, bring it around and that's our purl. Now you're going to purl all the way across this row to the last three stitches and you're going to knit the last three stitches. So purl across till you get down to here to the last three stitches. I'll see you there in just a minute. Okay, we are coming up to the last three stitches. I'm going to purl another one. I have three stitches left on the needle. Now I'm going to place that other stitch marker right here. Now the yarn is going to go back around to the front. And I'm going to go in and knit those three. Okay. Now I'm going to turn. You are all set up to work forward on this. What you're going to do, you are going to knit, you know this is your right side, you're going to knit on the right side. You're going to knit this three, you're going to knit these, and then knit the three at the end. Then when you come back, you're going to knit these three, you're going to purl these ones in the center, and you're going to knit the three on the end. And you're going to work those two rows until you have eight inches from the bottom of the piece. We want to end with a purl row. So you're going to end on the wrong side at the end of your eight inches. Now if you want to make it longer, make it longer, but end with a purl row. And I will see you guys and we will show how to proceed with the shaping for the top. See you then. Okay, everybody. I can't wait to see yours as you go along, the colors you pick, and how yours is looking. I have put a thread in the Facebook group where you can go there and you can put your pictures of your dickies and use the hashtag make a dickie make along. It's make a dicky mal okay and you can send me pictures through my email fibrofluzy crafts at gmail.com you can hit me up on instagram with that hashtag just however you guys want to do it all right you guys have fun today and have a good time making your dicky <laughs> see you later